frame at all. Slide out. What? Here. Here. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. These are not good for earrings. I don't know that they have headphones that are good for earrings. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you sure? Yep. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast from AM to PM. Hi, guys. How's everybody doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited about tonight. We have Isaiah's senior night at his school, so we get to walk out on the field. For football. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have a little surprise for him. We're going to bring Abby out there with us. That's going to be super fun. Yep. He, she doesn't typically attend things like this, so. Yeah, it's not her cup of tea. No. <laughs> She doesn't want to sit still and watch football. Right. But we have support. We have Becca coming, Abby's respite and uh, respite caregiver. And she's going to come and bring her just for that and then and then walk off. So, yeah. Well, and we can see how she's doing. She may be able to last for a little bit yeah. or not. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. If she doesn't, uh, she doesn't want to be there, she doesn't have to. Right. So that kind of uh, plays right into what we're talking about today. So. As parents, you know, that like we have these activities and unfortunately we're in the position now that we can both attend these kind of activities. Right. Uh, we haven't always been, uh, we spent a lot of football games and activities where just one of us would go uh, because we had, we had ab. Or we would go and we would take Abigail, but it would be like one of us would be distracted the whole time with, yeah. you know, her care. Right. Or have to, you know, stand outside or leave or whatever. Sit in the car I'm yeah. sure a lot of you guys can relate to that, you know, and then, so then that also applied to our jobs. Right. Um, let's see. Okay. So our, our work history, obviously we haven't always been YouTubers and uh, podcasters and <laughs> content creators and online chefs and things like that. You doing okay over there? Yeah. I'm going to have to take the earrings off. Earrings and um, headphones don't go well and they're like smashing my ears. <laughs> it's that dramatic. Those are some intense earrings, though. Right? And I wanted to look cute on video for those watching us, but, you know, it's just not going to work out. I'm sorry, guys. You still look cute. <laughs> okay. There we go. Whew. So I wonder how many parents out there can relate, and, and not just parents of special needs kids, but just parents in general, you know, the whole um, uh, adjusting seemingly your entire life around your kids. It's crazy you know? to think that that's what we do, but that's part of parenthood. It is. And it's, and it's normal. I think, you know, like in our situation, um, as you'll find out, like we had to go to the extreme of that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, so we both, we were both working. Well, I guess, gosh, yeah, we were both working when Isaiah was little because you were working at that car dealership. Yeah. And you were underway. So you weren't even home. Right. Yeah. I was in the Coast Guard then. Yep. And, uh, so we had childcare for Isaiah and stuff, and we had to, you know, we had to have dual income um, just to make it, just mm -hmm. to pay the bills. Yeah. But then Abby was born, and you were working while you were pregnant, right? Yep. You were working at Lowe's? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, Priscilla was at Lowe's. I was a motorcycle mechanic. I worked at a Honda dealership. Um, and I even went back to work after we had Abigail because we were living in North Carolina and your mom watched her. Yeah. After I went back to Lowe's. So that time was such a blur. Yeah. Um, so then Abby was six months old when we decided to move here. Right. So we moved here, but we had jobs lined up when we got here too. Right. Before we even moved here. Yeah. Priscilla's mom works out of the port here in, uh, in Jacksonville and, and uh, she had helped us get jobs out there. Um, like doing stevedoring stuff. So I was a mechanic. Um, I was a mechanic for the majority of my professional, like all of my professional career, um, just on various on various things. Out at the port, I was working on like the big stackers and giant forklifts and stuff like that. 
And then I started as a checker. So I was in charge of checking the -the over-the-road trucks when they would come in through the gate. It was a pretty cool job. It was. It was interesting. Learned a lot. So I decided that, well, the port wasn't for me. It just didn't didn't work out. Um, So I was like, okay, well... So the kids, kind of to back it up a little bit, the yeah. kids were in daycare at this point. Um, well, I guess Abigail was in daycare. I'm trying to think of ages. Isaiah was in VPK, so it's like a pre-kindergarten program here mm-hmm. in Florida. I think some states have it, not all. Um, and so it was at the same location that Abigail went to daycare. It was at a church. Right. Um, so that's where the kids would go every day. And... Yeah, and we were so we're both working dual income and yeah, making so, really good money. Yeah, we were. It was, but uh, uh, we were both, and we're both working like normal hours, normal ish. At that point, I was working normal hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we got to a point where we ran out of options for Abby, and as far as childcare was concerned, we really didn't have anywhere for her to go after after school. Yeah, so once, so obviously a few years have gone past since then. Yeah. And um, she was in school then at three, and this was after a diagnosis. We didn't have a diagnosis when we first moved here because she was only six months old. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we got her diagnosis. So like I said, it's, it had been a few years, but you were working at a different company, and you were working like 80 hours a week. Yeah. So I was working, but then I was also mainly with the kids 100% of the time. Right. Because you were working so much. But you were just trying to provide for us. Um, so that's just the way it worked then. Yeah, I pretty much never saw you guys. Right. I would uh, I would come home and the kids would be in bed. Mm-hmm. I would leave before they got up. Yeah. And so Abby was three at this point, And so she was in full day um, classroom in public school. But full day, obviously, you guys know that works. It's like 2.30 or something. She was getting out. So we were doing the extended care program with her. And her and Isaiah, even though they were both in elementary schools, they were at separate elementary schools because his school didn't have the ESE program, which is for special needs kids. Um, Not every school. Jacksonville, I think, is kind of set up different. Like not every school has every program available. So you kind of have to go where they have those programs available. Yeah. And so we had her in extended care, and that worked for a little while. But then they got to the point where they didn't have the personnel to be able to help her in the afternoons. And we just didn't feel like it was going the right way. Yeah. So after me being at the port for like six years, I think it was six years, yeah, um, I decided to resign my position. At first I did the FMLA, so the Family Medical Leave Act, and I would stay home with her, and we were trying to figure things out, and we couldn't figure out, like, what to do. So I finally had to put in my resignation, which I was super bummed about because I'm not built to be a stay-at-home mom. Like, some people are, and I think that's fantastic, but that's not me. But I knew I needed to do it for my family because we didn't have any other options for Abigail. Well, hold on. Back up. Did I stay at home first, or did you? Um, I thought I did. Yeah, well, I did because it was after the ADR. Yeah, so yeah, before you were, that, yeah. before yeah. that, I um, the company I was working for, they actually kind of went under. Yeah, I mean, they kind of quit doing. They still exist, but they quit doing what they were doing. They were a project based company, and yeah. so kind of when the project Projects was done, out. yeah, <laughs> then they didn't have another one lined up. Yeah, so um. So that kind of dissolved, and, and I, I, I bailed before they fired me, essentially, before they let yeah. me go. But you were working out of the garage at this point. Yeah, so I'm, I'm at home, and I'm doing, like, the stay-at-home dad thing, which worked well. You know, I, I enjoyed it, um, but to make ends meet, you know, because, like I said, I was working 80 hours a week, uh, t- you know, to replace, to attempt to replace that, um, I was working out of the garage, just fixing motorcycles, ATVs, things like that. And uh, started doing that for a while, and it was it was good, but it did not come close 
to replace that income. No, and I, at that point, had made a, a manager at the warehouse that I was working at, and so my hours changed. Remember, I was working mm-hmm. these ridiculous hours. If we had a ship come in, I was working until 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. Yeah, she'd come home at 4, four in the morning, like filthy, dirty. Yeah, and-, and so I was like, eh, I like the job, and I love working here, but I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm missing out on everything with my kids. Yeah. So it was time. It was time so for the, me. There to was do mom that. guilt. Yeah. Let's be real. Definitely mom guilt. Um, Priscilla felt terrible. You know, you know, part of it is like you, you talked about you're not like the stay at home mom type. Yeah. You would definitely have a career based mindset, but then at the same time, it was like my husband's staying at home. I'm missing out on these this should be me type yeah. of thing. Right. And that's when my professional volunteerism began. <laughs> <laughs> so we switched. Um, Priscilla resigned. I found a job. Um, I thought the job would be good. It ended up not being good. I was there for 90 days. It was a stepping stone. Was it 90 days? Yeah. Yeah. I was there for 90 days. And uh, I, I, so I've got a really, I'm pretty wishy washy when it comes to that. I get bored. I, you know, I, th- I have to stick and jive. I got, I got to move on to something else or things have to change. It's just, it's terrible. It's terrible. I, I had a couple of jobs. I say that for a couple of years here yeah. in Jacksonville, but most of them were, were short lived. It was like, you know, I was good at what I did. And I felt like if I, if I, one guy didn't want to give a raise after 90 days and it I was like, really? Like. I'm carrying your shop. I mean, I'm not being conceited here. I, I really was. Yeah. So I was like, whatever, man, I'm out. So, um, yeah. So I, <laughs> I, I got to the point where I was like, this is not what I was promised. Uh, I was making chump change for what I was doing. And you were working out of the garage at night when you got home. And yeah. so I was helping. So I was a quote unquote stay at home mom. The kids were at school. So I was doing like all the cooking, the cleaning, all those things. And we were running the business at that point. Yeah. Like under the table kind of because yeah. mean, it wasn't a legitimate business. Out of the garage in a neighborhood with, with a you know a deed restriction, like <laughs> homeowners <laughs> association where you're not supposed to do that kind of thing. So I, I would like bring someone's four wheeler in and close the garage door. So you yeah. know, just kind of keep it on the down low. Um, but I called Priscilla one day and... <laughs> The conversation was basically, I cannot do this anymore. Like, I've got to continue on with this business that we've started, you know, out of the garage and just and grow that. Um, I want to do my own thing. And she's like, and what were your words? I was like, okay, that sounds like a good plan. You said, well, then do it, is what you said. <laughs> you said, well, then do it. Oh, okay. You know, as in, like, okay. stop talking about it and do it, right? I yeah. mean, that was your intention. Yeah. What she didn't mean was do it today. Right. Like within 30 minutes. That's what I did. I uh, <laughs> I walked into the boss's office and I said, hey, what do you need before I'm done? I am I just can't do this anymore. What do you need from me? You know, and, and I, I want to make sure I don't leave somebody high and dry. Um, so. Someone else, not, why were not you his look, wife. Why were you looking behind us? That was creepy. Because there, it, that van threw me off. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so I, you know, walked in there. So what do you need? He said, well, I, I need you to update me on what you got going on. Of course, he was little befuddled he's like well uh update me on what you got going on and i need that tractor fixed so i went out and fixed the tractor that nobody else could fix mind you i fixed it in a few minutes update on what was going going on i called priscilla when i was in the truck on the way home i said i did it she's like you did what i said i quit y'all this is my life (laughs) this is my life i was like no 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 that's not what i meant asa I meant, like, get prepared for this. That was the last time, though, that I did, like, a knee-jerk reaction. Like I, I haven't done it since then. But Well. <laughs> no, come on. I, I have Have you ever heard of this YouTube job oh, that we on, have? come on. That's not true either. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, you know, I, I did that, and it was, uh, it was a little scary. It but, was. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, this is what we're doing, so we need to get a, a place. Yeah. And you were like, you were kind of freaked out to get a place because oh. you're like, that's a lot of overhead. I'm it's like, a ton of overhead. well, you can't do it out of the garage. Yeah. So, so we, we moved in, um, moved into our, our new shop. In December. Yeah. 
uh, we did not make our first dollar until 14 days later. Yeah. So it went two full weeks, no money. That was terrifying. Uh, we cashed in Priscilla's 401k uh, to fund everything, to buy the, some of the shop tools that we needed, whatnot, lift benches and tire machines. And we opened a motorcycle ATV repair shop. Yep. Uh, December, yeah, we moved in. In February, we had to double the shop size, so we had to move to another unit. <sighs> um, it just blew up. It was, a, it was a wild ride. It was. So... Uh, Priscilla did not get another job. You were working for Shipped. You did that. I did that. A few years later. Yeah. Did you do anything else? That was a long time after we started the shop, yeah. though. Well, yeah, because the first, like, five years, six years, uh, Priscilla was there every single day running the front counter, doing paperwork, And our managing. kids, I was telling Lauren about oh, this yeah, the other day. About the kids. So we didn't have respite. We didn't have family members that even lived in Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, we had no caregivers at all. So we set the back room up to be a playroom um, in the shop. And so we had like a little baby gate up so that Abby and Isaiah could hang out. Y'all, we worked such long hours that we had a bed back there for them. And they would sleep. I mean, some nights we'd be there at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. Yep. So we did that for like five years. Isaiah would do homework. We had Isaiah could sing every single song. (laughs) From, uh, what Happy was that? Happy Feet. Happy Feet 2. Yeah. He knew every single song because Abby loved that movie. She wanted it on repeat then. Yeah, so she would watch that movie or listen to the music so, in that movie. So we were literally like the four of us spent every, as soon as they would get out of school, like Isaiah would either ride the bus there or I'd go pick them up. I'd pick Abby up every day and they would come back to the shop. And so we did that for five years. We did that. And it wasn't terrible. You know, it wasn't like the kids were locked into this little room in the back. Um, it was like, that's what Abby family and I, businesses Abby and do. Isaiah running around, you know, the only time, like we'd have Isaiah, go, you know, we had a customer, we had a customer at the counter for an extended period of time. Um, he would go in the back room with Ab and hang out and that's where he learned happy feet. Um, <laughs> but riding four wheelers and cause there's yep. a little wooded area by the shop, riding four wheelers, test riding go-karts. Isaiah was my designated lemonade go-kart. Stand set up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Lemonade stand set up at the end of the parking lot. So he, he was selling lemonade to raise money for servers for autism yeah. for a fundraiser. And he came up with it all on his own. Ended up raising like over $700. We have a lot of good like pictures and memories from those days. Yeah. So yeah, we did that for five years. And then we moved to a new shop. Um, well, we hired people just before did. that move. But that's when I was able to kind of back off a little and get more in depth with Abigail's um, education and Isaiah's. That's when I became president of his middle school PTA. Um, I started the PAC program at Abby School, which is Parent Action Committee. And so I was able to do all of those things because we had people at the shop then. Um, and it was nice because I was, you know, I was getting to fulfill my mom needs and I was very involved. And so I loved that. I loved that. I didn't have to miss that. We, when we opened the shop, we really believed like this was the ultimate level of freedom that we could, you know, with not being able to find childcare for Abigail with, um, you know, her needs, um, and then being there for the kids we really felt as if that was a truly like a, a freeing experience, you know, job mm-hmm. for, for the both of us. Like we would have that freedom and we did in essence, but if you're not there, you don't make money. Right. And, uh, and it was tough, you know, building a business from the ground up, like no customer base whatsoever. And, uh, just, just creating all that, you know, every bit of, marketing funding um you know oh back end books the, we oh. would drive around and write down addresses of people who had motorcycles and lawn mowers in their garages remember yeah. that and so then we we'd send, send them, them a card <laughs> it was um it was strenuous like it was just it was that job was constant and it was constantly on my mind a major i basically stressed out for eight years straight yeah, it was a it was a high stress job. And then we added employees, and we thought that life was going to get easier. We're gonna have someone at the front counter. We're gonna have someone, uh, you know, in the back in the shop. And like, I would be able to to do more with the family, and not have to be at the shop every single day. 
Uh, and that's not just not how it works. The more employees you had, the more problems you had. Right. You know, it's just people. Um, so that increased my stress level. It did provide me with a little more freedom. Um, but I was attached to my phone because I would have to put out fires all day long. Um, well, and even when we would try to travel, like if we had an emergency or, you know, just, and the money wasn't amazing. Like, no, I mean, the shop would do, you know, the shop would do a quarter million dollars in a year. On our best year, we did a quarter million dollars, $250,000, and our take home was probably $50,000. Right. And that's, that's crazy. Like, for the amount of hours that we worked and owning that business, like, that and that's the thing. Like we don't want anybody to think like fifty thousand dollars is a great salary, but when you're right. working like well, but so I think when many people hours. look at a business owner and they're like, "Oh, you balling, yeah, a business owner." Like holy crap, like working literally what I was before, like eighty hours a week, and right. making that. You know, when I was working eighty hours a week before that, it was like like seventy five thousand dollars a year, right? You know. And I didn't have the headaches of running a business. That was the <laughs> yeah. boss's job. Yeah. All I did was show up and, and fix things. So it was uh, it was something. I We were really trying to build it into something. And it just, we just got so much pushback. Um, it just, you know, it, it, be, it got to a point when we finally shut down, when we were forced to shut down the shop, um, it was a blessing. It was. Because it was, it was sad. You know, we cried in that video. Yeah talking about it but um because that was not long after we had started vlogging you know when when uh when, when we i said no we'll never go full-time vlogging yeah that's crazy talk yeah <laughs> um so like what was it a year before we shut down the shop that we started vlogging or two years a year a year yeah a year before we shut down uh i just i was like hey let's youtube weird thing and uh, so like let's let's vlog, and so I was like that sounds dumb. So, but we got into that, and it grew and grew and grew, and we saw the potential in that. And I, you know, just like I have with everything else, I studied the heck out of it and tried to figure out everything I, there is to know about it. Um, and we grew because of it, and it and I've gotten endless support from Priscilla, um, and the kids, you know, on on doing this, and it has just been fantastic. It's it's this is the job that we were seeking all along. Yeah. You know, working from home in the garage for a couple hundred bucks a week, you know, trying to make ends meet, uh, working two jobs to make ends meet while someone else took care of our kid, you know, um, this has turned out to be the best, the best option by far. We're so very thankful for what we have here. Yeah, we are. And so I guess that's kind of what we wanted to tell everyone is, I don't know. What did we want to tell them? You like, know, you're gonna you're gonna be in positions like when we were both working a job, a job, right? Both of us working outside the home. We were doing the best thing that we could do for our family mm -hmm. at that time, and we felt that way. Looking back, was it maybe not? But we felt like it was. When one of us, when I stayed home with the kids, that's the best idea that we had for the for our family at the time. Mm -hmm. When you stayed home with the kids, when you went to work for shipped. You know, for those extra few dollars while Abby was in school, like, you know, all of those things that we've done up until this point, like I, I look back and I'm like, man, I really wish I would have started YouTube 10 years ago. But you have to remember like not to regret things, like never, ever, ever regret things. Doing what we did before may, gave us the type of work ethic that we have now. Yeah. The reason why Priscilla wakes up, you know, by the, after getting Abby to school pretty much. So from 930 on, Granted, you do some work before that, but from nine thirty till midnight, she's working because this is this is what we have dreamed of. You know, being able to be there for every single thing for our kids, mm -hmm. to provide Abby the support that she needs, and and you know, putting in the work on the back end too of getting uh, care care work care providers for Abigail. That's been a huge thing. Yeah, and that required has. work. You know, we've just worked our butts off for our kids, and that's paying off now. And I think that's a important message. Like I, I know, like trust me, we we've been. I've seen comments from you guys, and it's you know, about well, I don't have the support you guys have, or I don't have you know, we don't have this where we're you know that kind of thing. And guys, we get it. We yeah. totally get we've it. We've been there. We've been. We spent a long time there. You you know, you have to think about it. Like Abigail's fourteen. We've been doing this for for a good while now, and it's 
the support is there, but it yeah, you got to work for it. And I know that you guys are. And it you just have takes to just time. Deal with the waiting list. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the, that's just part of it. I um, mean, we've even had this conversation with our friends. You know, you guys hear us talk about the mm-hmm. brazies and the wees all the time, because we're all. I mean, the we're at different parts of our life. We're we have an eighteen year old now. That's crazy to say. Right. Um, their kids are much younger than our kids. So we're not at the same parts of life that they are. Yeah. And I think that goes with a lot of you guys who have younger kids. And I just want to give you hope that it, like Asa says all the time, we don't want to say it's going to get easier, but it's going to get different. And you're going to have things, you know, honestly, we've talked and we said, we're thankful we have the help now that Abigail's older because imagine having a 14 year old who, I mean, we had a 14 year old who was typical. He could come home and make himself a snack and make sure he got his homework done and, you know, do his chores and all those things. Now we have a 14 year old who requires a hundred percent care. And she's you know? been requiring a hundred percent care for the last 14 years. Right. So you get to a point where you, where you start to, you know, you feel that caregiver burnout mm-hmm. and and having the assistance later is better than having it early. I can tell you, like yeah. if you have a choice, one or the other, it's better to get it later. Um, you know, she's stronger. She's moodier. She's a teenager. You know, it's I and she has more needs like she requests yeah. more. She's able to communicate more. So she has more needs. I mean, yeah. her um, progress has has definitely I mean, it's amazing, right? Like the difference right. between now and when she was three, but she was so much easier when she was three, even though she's so much more capable now. So that's that's an important thing to consider, you know, when it comes to like respite and whatnot. Don't stress out about the waiting list because if, you know, by the time you get off that waiting list, you, you're going to be celebrating. You're not even going to think about the, the stressors of, right. you know, before, you know, when you were sitting on that waiting list. It's just, it's history. And, you know, think outside of the box with your careers that you do. Yeah. Um, if you, you know, there are so many opportunities out there for you guys to look at, to get very creative with how you can provide for your family and what's important to you. You know, is it important for you to stay home? Is it important for you to be able to go to their different events and therapies and all of that kind of stuff? So get creative, do your research and, um, you just never know what's going to happen if you have an entrepreneur um, mindset, which both of us do. We kind of have from the get-go, I think. Um, then kind of take it and run with it. You're never going to know if you don't try. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, for example, when you were working for Shipped, Priscilla was doing grocery delivery while Abby was in school, while I was at the shop. Because it was, she was trying to fit that in, you know, she, five or 600 bucks a month. You know, that she would make. I was off doing four hundred a week sometimes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, four hundred a week off of shipped. I mean, that's that's our rent. Yeah. That paid our rent for the month. Yeah. And then some. So I mean, that was fantastic. You know, that was uh doing things like that, like Priscilla said, thinking outside the box, you know. Um, shipped is always hiring. Like <laughs> those type yeah. of places, you can always get in there. Well, and the nice thing about Shipped is you could add something. I have a couple of girls. I know a couple of people that do things outside of Shipped, mm-hmm. And so, you know, you just never know. Yeah. Get creative. All right, guys. I hope we inspired you or something. I don't know. Just kind of told you about our life. Just telling stories over here. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. You're supposed to cue the music. Crap, I didn't have an intro song. We'll sing. This is an outro. Or an outro song. You want to sing something? Um, okay. It's going to be a good day. <laughs> That's my go-to. Bye.